Bell from the Altoona Mirror and former Penn State great Mike Irwin, who's still hanging around Central PA. Gentlemen, thank you again for joining me. Mark, Penn State, they lost his 24-point favorites. They had outscored Maryland by 156 points over the last three games, 0-3 for the first time since 2001. I mean, what, what do we say now? I mean, this is, watching yesterday, that was pathetic. Well, depending on your political party, mailing it in is either good or bad. But if you're a Penn State football fan, mailing it in is not a good thing. And that, really, that's for one of the few times in James Franklin's era uh, we saw a Penn State football team mail it in. I was very surprised. Usually when this team has had its back up against the wall after a couple of losses, uh, it's come out and played really well. Clearly, that was not the case. A lot of blame to go around. I don't think they played well on either side of the ball. The first couple of weeks we talk about not playing complimentary. They didn't play well on either side of the ball. You got some good things out of special teams. Once again, looked unprepared from a coaching standpoint. I just wonder if everything that's gone on this year, it's impacted everybody, but some programs have handled it better than others. Obviously, this program has not handled it well from the football side, from the testing and keeping guys healthy, they've done a, a great job. But from the football winning games, they've really struggled. Yeah, I, I would agree, and I think this is beyond right now an X and O situation. This is an internal passion, desire to play this game, and we didn't see that yesterday. I mean, uh, a four touchdown uh, favorite to be down 35-7 and just sort of look like they were sleepwalking, no fire. Hey, they've now been outscored in the first half, 66 to 20. They haven't been ready to play this season or e each of these individual games, you, you would have thought after your 0-2 and, uh, and played decent in the second half against Ohio State that they would have been ready to go against Maryland at home. Uh, a lot of problems right now, and I think this is really James Franklin's a real test for him in his tenure to bring this back this season and really avoid a really bad year. Mike, Mike what are you seeing when Mark says, you know, mailing it in and whatnot, what signs are you seeing as a former player where you know a team just is not in it mentally and just they're just looking to get out of the game healthy? Well, I agree with these guys that they haven't played well on either side of the ball. But I think we're forgetting one thing. I think Maryland has a really good team, and I don't think they showed it up until this point. They have a lot of good recruits, and their quarterback is outstanding. I mean, they're in there, and I think you're going to hear a lot more from Maryland later on. And if you look back, I mean, Losing to Indiana, and Indiana had a big win over the weekend. I mm -hmm. mean, they could back and beat Michigan, and Ohio State is a loss. And we very could have won that game against Indiana very easily. I mean, we you know, the two-pointer is controversial. But, uh, but I, I think we've got to wait to see how this season plays out because I think Maryland had – I think Hoxley has, has done a good job uh, down there. At, uh, and I think they're a pretty good football team. Well, you know, they may be heard from. I agree with you. Their skill people were really good. Penn State made them look like all Americans, but the quarterback has played, uh, you know, as you know, in honor of Joe, young Tua has done a great <laughs> job. And the receiver was a freshman. I mean, they shocked Penn State. Penn State's pass defense. I mean, if you're going to start listing things of concern, they've been lit up for 30 points four straight games. Uh, they're averaging, I think I was looking at some numbers, in the seven of the last eight games, take out the Rutgers game at the end of the year, they're allowing 33 points a game in yeah, seven, it, seven games. And Mike, you, you make a good point. That's a better Maryland team than, that, that, than we've seen in a while, but it's the same program that hasn't scored a touchdown, that had not scored a touchdown against Penn State in three consecutive games. You know, the one thing that I thought, when, when I talk about people mailing it in, the one guy who didn't mail it in to me was Sean Clifford. And well, there were some other players, too, as well, Dotson. But I think Clifford's actually the other way. I think he's trying too hard. Doesn't it look that way? He's trying to make every single play. He's not throwing the ball when he need, way when he needs to. I think he's got too much on his shoulders. You know, we could debate whether they should have taken him out. But I think they have to try to get him to be a, to go a little bit easier on himself and not try to win things all by himself. Because when he does that, I think that's when he makes his mistakes. Yeah, big, big picture, you know, there's so many problems with this team right now. The one, if you guys had to pick one to start, you got to start here and then kind of work yourself back to, you know, what we knew you guys as, what would that be? For me, it would be the offensive line. I mean, without question, beyond, beyond the coaching. I mean, I think ultimately everything speaks to what the coaching staff has done, and they would be the first ones to tell you this. But we expected this to be one of their better offensive lines, experience, deep, 
and you get into a game like this for the, for the second straight game, they really struggled. They don't know what's going on on the right side. Until that gets fixed, that offense is not going to be what it needs to be. You know, I agree with Neil, the defensive secondary. I think they've lost more games in the last, maybe I don't know how many games, teams come back from behind and scored in the last quarter. How many times has that happened to us? They look like they're disorganized there. And the coverage, I mean, you compare our coverage with Maryland's coverage. Maryland was all over our receivers. I mean, those guys did, couldn't move. They were breathing on them. But if you look, these guys were running across the middle, wide open, catching pass. I think they had to reevaluate the secondary and figure out who's helping them and get rid of some people in the and secondary and, and make some changes. And that's ex exactly. <laughs> get rid of some people. This isn't that, <laughs> that's well, get, exactly. Well, change some guys I, around. But that's exactly why. Penn State wasn't able to run because Maryland's corners were able to lock down Penn State. Penn State really had very few people wide open. Uh, but back to your point about what they're asking from Clifford, the guys carried the ball another 17 times. This is 51 times in three games. So you wonder why he thinks there's a lot on his shoulders. Well, the good thing, Mike, at least in this game, the secondary didn't give up a big lead. <laughs> it, was on, it was on the other end well, of it. So. Well, I agree with you. The secondary problem is the offensive line because they haven't. Yeah. I mean, we lost a couple good running backs, which has hurt, well, hasn't helped any. And they're still trying to sort out who's the best running back we have there. And I think Ford's going to do it for a while, but I think there's some other guys coming that might be able to run the ball a little better than Ford. But. Uh, We'll wait and see how that pans out, I guess. All right, so ahead on Nittany Nation Overtime, what side of the ball concerns you the most with this team? And is it fixable? We'll talk about that next. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime on WTAJ, your Nittany Nation station. Tonight's show is brought to you by Joel Comfort Toyota. Do you have any idea how your mattress affects your body and how well you sleep? Is it too hard or too soft, causing you to wake up with sore shoulders, back, or hips? Are you uncomfortable because you're too hot or too cold? Now you can get the total body support you need and the better sleep you want with the new MyPillow mattress topper. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. When I invented my new MyPillow mattress topper, I made it to have everything you'd ever want in a topper. My mattress topper helps give you the support you need, helps relieve your pressure points, and regulates your body temperature for you as an individual. It comes with a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry the cover. It's made in the USA, and I back it with my 60-day money-back guarantee. Go to MyPillow.com or call now to get your very own MyPillow mattress topper. Use the promo code, and Mike will give you 30% off and two standard MyPillows absolutely free. Order now. MyPillow topper delivers on its promise to give me a better night's sleep. I can sleep all night through, and it's a miracle for me. Mike's exclusive three-layer design starts with a layer of MyPillow foam, providing you superior support and comfort. The second layer of transitional foam evenly distributes body weight and helps relieve uncomfortable pressure points for optimal comfort. Mike's ultra soft outer layer is a patented temperature regulating cover that helps keep you at your ideal sleeping temperature all night long. Unlike other sleep systems costing thousands, the MyPillow mattress topper takes comfort to a whole new level without any wires, remotes, or moving parts. Call now or go to MyPillow.com to order your MyPillow topper. Use the promo code to see 30%. When you do, Mike will give you two of his standard MyPillows absolutely free. That's right, two standard MyPillows free and 30% off your MyPillow topper today. Order now. I personally guarantee it's going to change your bed into the most comfortable bed you'll ever own. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. And welcome back to Nittany Nation Overtime here with the Nitwits. All right, Mike, there's a plethora of items that Penn State needs to fix. Where do you start and really dive into, you know, either offense or defense? Like, I mean, what are you seeing that just, you're like, you just make, you just put your hands up, like, what is going on here? Well, I think we have problems on both sides of the ball. <laughs> I mean, I would probably give them equal weighting, like 50% for the defense and 50% for the offense. Now, on defense, I think we do have, you know, a good defensive line and linebackers. I mean, I think we're pretty solid there. I mean, maybe they haven't shown it. That may have been manhandled by a couple of these people. But our offensive line, I and mean, we have an excuse because of the running backs, but the offensive line hasn't moved anybody out. And I don't know if Maryland had that good a defensive line, but I think every game we've played, they, our offensive line hasn't been able to blow anybody out of there. And these guys can't get through that. There's no holes 
to run into. Nobody can run <clears> in that with that offense. You know, I, I think uh, it's not, this would be uh, the position of, of the coaching staff, and I think we have to understand, and this is something that's new to us in the last 10 years, is there was total stability among the assistant coaches. And now you're rotating different coordinators, uh, position coaches, uh, and there's a transition, uh, whether, the, you know, them getting to know the talent, the talent getting to know them. Uh, I don't think there's a real identity. I didn't like when they... I think there's an impatience. They should have kicked the field goal, you know, to make it 7-3. You just went on a 15-play drive. You've got to get something out of that. And then the other thing is when Clifford uh, was sacked and on the fumble, it's third and one. He's in the shotgun. Play action. Go. You know, I mean, run where's, the ball. Where's the fullback? Run the ball, get a first down. Third and one. So I just don't know if they know who they want to be. Yeah, I, I would go uh, touch on what Neil said when you talk about the coaching uh, turnover. You know, nobody looks at Alabama and says, look, they lose all these coaches every year. You know, how come they're, they're struggling? What I will give James Franklin, uh, you know, credit or kind of a little bit of a pass on, to have the amount of turnover they had this year with other circumstances that arose. You know, so you're talking about installing a relatively new offense, new receivers coach, although that's working out pretty well, new offensive line coach, new defensive line coach. You look at where most of the issues are, it's in a lot of those different areas. The other thing I would say about the defense, this is almost hard to believe, but Maryland scored 28 points offensively in that game. You know how many red zone snaps they had? zero right. they did not have a red zone snap those were all big plays so we can talk about the offense and i think overall the offensive line is the biggest problem but when you're giving up that many big plays that a team doesn't even have to get into the red zone zone to beat you <clears throat> that's a really bad thing and right. not only that but you know the i believe the first two touchdowns were the exact same play just 20 yards back and then the touchdown right before the half the guys 30 yards behind the defense and there's only a minute to go. I mean, is that more on players just not listening to coaches or are the, are the coaches just, I mean, there's they're the lack of preparation, like you said, Neil, like they're not ready to play. I think that the uh, yards after the catch was a huge factor uh, yesterday. And it just, this is a snowball effect. Uh, but, you know, you get back to, we've been talking about the offensive line now for several years. Yeah. There's three or four uh, multiple year starters, a couple three year starters. I think it's lack of recruiting at that position. Well, when you see them making the changes they did, you know, bringing in Caden Wallace at right tackle and then moving Will Fries inside, bringing in Juice Scruggs at right guard later, they clearly, that, that's, that's not platooning. That's, that's desperation trying to figure out what you're going to do during the course of the game. And at some point, you have to look toward the younger, the younger players. You just do, because if you're going to struggle, doesn't it make sense to do it with players who are going to maybe learn and have more of an upside? And you did with a couple of false starts consecutively by younger players. Yeah. Well, that wasn't no. Two of those were on. Uh, two of those were on uh, Walker, who's played a lot of football. I mean, so that wasn't young guys. You know, I, I agree with Neil on one other thing, like having the quarterback under center occasionally. You know, it, that's not happening. But well, it should happen. It. I think it should <laughs> happen. I was watching the Cowboys and the Steelers earlier this week. And, you know, that's what they did. I mean. They can wait under center, and I think it hurts the offensive line performance because if you look at every time they're, they're protecting Clifford uh, because they have to back up and, and pass block all the time. So they're not trying to blow anybody out in the line. So and with the number of passes we had, I mean, the whole offensive line, all they did is retreat all day. I nominate Neil to ask Franklin about that this week. <laughs> yeah. And, and a, a fullback. And a fullback. <laughs> first, first question. First question in the press. No, she don't even let him get the opening statement. In, but, um, no, in terms of Clifford, you know, a lot of talk was like, should he be pulled? Not because he was, you know, horrible, because, you know, he's trying his best out there. But is yesterday the kind of game where it's like, all right, this is a loss from us. Just don't get him hurt, just let him kind of re re regroup, or did you guys have any problem with him staying in there till the end? No, I would have, I would have taken him out and given Levis a, a look. Number one, let, let's see what Levis can do. Number two, I think at that point Clifford had been sacked seven times, seven times, it turned it over three times. Let him take a deep breath. You weren't going to win that game. When you get to a certain point in the fourth quarter when you know you're not going to win, I think that's when you put in the backup and let Clifford take a deep breath. I got to give Clifford credit though. He comes out after every single game, 
puts the blame on himself. You, you can only do that so many times, but from dealing with us, which isn't an easy thing, he's been nothing but a class act. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's also part of the job to be a big-time quarterback yeah. in that program. Uh, I wondered, um, there were so many things that were going wrong. You weren't going to win the game, and he didn't maybe want to start a quarterback controversy on top it. of all that last week, but I didn't know who was being punished. Clifford or Levis. Right. But, but why wouldn't they get somebody else some experience? Yeah. I mean, the other, he's been in there, and he's the starting quarterback. At least in the last five minutes, yeah, I mean, the last two or three drives. If he got hurt or something, then you're going to be looking for another quarterback. I mean, so I think you give him some time in there to let him get a feel for the being on the field and let him do go from there. All right, coming up next, can anything be salvaged from the season? And were there any bright spots from yesterday's loss to Maryland? We'll talk about that next. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime on WTAJ, your Nittany Nation station. Tonight's show is brought to you by Joel Comfort Toyota. For over 40 years, Joel Confer Toyota has provided the utmost customer service while serving local communities. Stop in today and let Alan Hall use his 44 years of experience to help you find your new Toyota vehicle. Log in today at joelconfer.com or visit our showroom at Joel Confer Toyota of State College. With 20 locations and thousands of new and pre-owned vehicles, there's a lot we can say about the Sioka dealership's experience, but it seems that automotive news already beat us to it. This is what car buying was meant to be. Everything you want in service, selection, and total satisfaction. We invite your family to be part of our family. Experience the difference at SiokaDealerships.com. And coming soon, America's largest Subaru dealership in the heart of Philadelphia. Pacifico's Bakery, your hometown quality breads and rolls since 1947. Freshly baked each day in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Our tradition continues to provide area families and businesses with delicious breads, buns, rolls, and so much more. Remember to visit our outlet store for our specialty breads. Pacifico's, we have breads and rolls to enjoy during the upcoming holidays, barbecues, get-togethers, dinners, or even a snack. Pacifico Bakery, the name you can trust. During the Veterans Day sale at Love's Furniture and Mattresses, save up to $1,200 with 0% APR financing for up to 72 months. And get a free TV or free adjustable power base upgrade on qualifying purchases. Find doorbuster deals like an Emory sofa for just $3.98, a Delmar leather sofa for $6.99, or beautiful bedroom sets for as low as $5.99. Plus, get a six-piece dining set that seats the whole family for as low as $5.99. Only at Love's, the Midwest's fastest-growing furniture and mattress store. Hi, I'm Carrie Confer. You know, I've driven Toyota trucks most of my life. Silly boys, trucks are for girls. Come see us at Joel Confer Toyota. Joel Confer Toyota in State College. Toyota, let's go places. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. All right, welcome back. Now, granted, Penn State lost by multiple touchdowns, and those final scores were in the latter half of the fourth quarter, but I've been very impressed, guys, with the wide receiving course, specifically Jahan Dotson. I think he has taken that next step. Yes, they're 0-3, but you know what? A lot of people were talking about this year. Could they replace K.J. Handler? Who's going to be the, uh, that other person besides Fryermuth? And I think Dotson's proven that. He's one of the best wide receivers in the Big Ten. Yeah, I think Taylor Stubblefield, the new uh, receivers coach, uh, former Purdue great player, has been one of the unsung heroes on this team. I mean, it's tough to find unsung heroes when a team's struggling. But the way that he's worked with this young receiving core has been, uh, you know, just tremendous. Obviously, you have Dotson, uh, Parker Washington with two touchdown catches, and uh, Keandre Lambert-Smith. I think you're going to see more and more. of. The other thing I would say about Dotson, you know, not only did he do it on the field, and maybe this means more to me because I'm in the media, but afterward, he really held his teammates accountable. I mean, he said some pretty strong things, not necessarily in a negative sense, but it's like, hey, this is not what Penn State's all about. People have to start focusing on the game more. So when you talk about a guy producing, not only did he produce on the field, but after the game, he said all the right things. Mike, can anything be salvaged from this season? They're 0-3. There's no Big Ten championship, no college football playoff. Right now, you're just playing for pride. And in a team that hasn't been 0-3 in almost two decades, this is you know, uncharted territory for probably a lot of these kids because they probably didn't lose in high school. Well, I got to, I mean, I thought that was part of the program, but <laughs> when I was at Penn State my sophomore year, we started out 0-3. Yeah. And uh, then we came out and won six out of our next seven games. 
and we ended up being number 14 in the country. But the biggest victory, we went out to Ohio State, well, they were number two in the country. After you were 0-3. Yeah, after we were 0-3, uh, and we went out to Ohio State. We were 2-3 and 3 when we went out to Ohio State. Okay. And they were undefeated at number two in the country, and we beat them 27-0 out there. Yeah. They didn't get a, few, or a, a first down until the end of the third quarter. Would that have been That's Rip's, when Woody Hayes was out there. Yeah, that. would that have been Rip's greatest win, you think? Well, it's the greatest win I was involved the with. Your greatest <laughs> <win>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your greatest win. Yes, I would say it probably was Rip's greatest win. That, uh, you know, when you look at this, and Dodson hit on some things, because I think there are some leadership issues, and I know they have about eight captains and a leadership council and whatnot, so you wonder, there's got to be leaders. Uh, but he, he identified some things. And you're in a different era right now of college football that you're going to be in with opt-outs and, and transfers, and, and the players have a lot more freedom. Uh, so I'm kind of curious how that's all going to evolve. Yeah, they have a lot that they can still gain, and they have maybe even more that they could lose. In 01, they started out 0 and 4, but they finished. They were 5 and 5 going down to Virginia. It was the year of 9 11, and they were playing for a bowl game. Uh, they at least put themselves in a position to have a plus 500 season. So yeah, there, every game's a big game to, you know, for a program like this. Well, Which I mean, captain has the best leadership qualities. Which one of the eight has you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he has eight guys as captain. I mean, I don't understand that. Right? They should never have more than two, right? Mike? Well, I think two would be about <laughs> yeah, Mike wanted only one. <laughs> so I, I, until I was there, there was always one, and then they started two because you had offense and defense. But uh, before that, you only had well, you one only team had was playing one both ways. <laughs> <laughs> These guys were playing both ways. You only needed one. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing I would say, you know, it, with respect to the leadership is they said all the right things last week, and they still came out and laid an egg. What they need to do now is put, close out all the outside noise. I mean, you talk about how different things are. Could you have imagined 10 years ago when a guy leaves early for the NFL and you see him tweeting, uh, you know, negatively towards a team? I mean, this is what you're dealing with now. They have to tune all of that out. But I think that's a negative on Parsons. No, I, I know. I, I do. I, that's what I'm yeah, saying. I, right. I, I think that I'm saying they have to tune all of that stuff out. They have to tune the media out. They have to tune the, the fans out, with all due respect to the fans. But they re if they don't do that, this is not going to get any better. So they're really at an inflection point here. Are they going to go one way? Are they going to go the other? Maybe we'll give some hints in our predictions. Oh. All oh, right. God, Coming up next, our nitwit of the year saying they're looking a little <laughs> deflated <laughs> right now. Can a trip to corn country fix that? We'll talk about that next. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime on WTAJ, your Nittany Nation station. Tonight's show is brought to you by Joel Comfort Toyota. This is where your problems end. Call Professionals Auto Body. We'll get you out, get you out of the fix you're in. Ron Peretta here from Professionals Auto Body. Car dealers are charging absorbent labor rates to consumers, over $100 an hour. But for the insurance companies, they cut those rates in half. Why pay these ridiculous labor rates? Demand that they lower their rates when having any service work done. Or join the people in the area switching to the Professionals Auto Body family of automotive services. Whether you're in need of collision repairs, mechanical and electrical repairs, towing and detailing, or glass installation, Professionals Auto Body Family of Services has you covered. Where the area goes for highly personalized service and untouchable quality. Professionals Auto Body will get you out, get you out of the fix you're in. Veterans Voices, honoring those who served. The Troopster organization works to find the best way possible to get care packages to our troops around the world. Founded in 2015 by U.S. Navy Petty Officer Chelsea Mandelo, Troopster wants the care packages they send to be a link to home. WTAJ is honoring those who served in Veterans Voices. WTAJ's Veterans Voices is proudly presented by Prime Sirloin. I am a genius. Did I get a perfect SAT score? Was I a doctor at the age of 13? No. I'm a genius because I hired Kitchen Saver. I got a kitchen that looks brand new, but saved time and money. Because Kitchen Saver uses my cabinets that are still in good shape. They call it refacing. I call it easy. 
They'll install new doors, drawers, and hardware that you choose. If you want to be a genius, go to KitchenSaver.com to learn more. Prepare to be impressed. Kitchen Saver. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. All right, welcome back. As we wrap things up here, let's take a look at our Nitwit of the Year standings and shout out to the deflated ball running away with the Nitwit title for this year with two. <laughs> Neil, Mark, myself, we got to get it together. The only one who's picked it correctly is Tyler. I and think he, the deflated ball should be up at the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. It's having a great year. <laughs> All right, Penn State travels to Nebraska. Penn State about a field goal favorite, at least right now. Could change a lot during the week. But let's go with you, Mike. What, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts on this game? Give us a prediction. Well, I'm probably going to bet with my heart rather than my head. I'm going to go with Penn State. And ironically, I, I didn't know what the odds were going to be, but... I'm picking Penn State 27, Nebraska 24. 27-24. All right, Neil. Hmm. You know, I looked at this. Uh, you, you go back to Nebraska. These are two desperate teams with proud traditions. Uh, but I look at Penn State. They were 8-0, they were uh, you know, basically uh, about seven games ago. And, you know, I think they're 3-5 and five since then, or 2-5 two, two and five since then. Um, you know, Nebraska was getting blown out last year. I know Penn State just got blown out. I guess the moral of this story, I'm going to stick with Penn State and this core, uh, this offensive core to get it together, put some faith in Clifford, because I do think he's a leader. I'm going to say Penn yeah. State 27, Nebraska 20. Mark, quickly. I'm going to go uh, with Nebraska. Penn State has to show them to me that they can do it. So I'm going to go uh, Nebraska 24, Penn State 21. All right, I'm going Nebraska 23, Penn State 22 in a nail biter. That's going to do it for Nit or Nittany Nation Overtime. We'll see you next week. Hopefully we're celebrating a Penn State win, but we'll see you at that, uh, this time next week.